All right, YouTube, what is going on? Miguel Quiles here uh, from my new studio here in Orlando, Florida. Uh, still not ready, so uh, trying to make this work right now. Hopefully the video and the audio sounds good. Uh, if you're in the chat room right now and watching this live, let me know in the chat room where you are watching from. Uh, but today I got a very, I have a very special treat for you guys. Uh, my guest today, Lindsay Adler, amazing fashion and beauty photographer in uh, based out of New York, uh, but not in New York at the moment, which is kind of interesting. Let's bring Lindsay on. How are Hi. you today? I'm really, really good. Yeah, this doesn't look like a New York background to you. No, I mean, it kind of does. I've seen New York backgrounds, you know, brick walls and yeah, all like that good the, stuff. The, the industrial chic. Mm hmm. I'm in I'm in farmhouse barn chic right now. I, I dig it. I totally dig it. Oh, oh, it was funny. So I started working again. Like, okay, wait, let me let me back that up. So I've been working, but the pace of things has decreased like dramatically. And yesterday, um, maybe the like maybe the last like three days, I've actually had a lot of stuff to do, and I feel like my brain has atrophied. So oh, I've been no. like, and I was like. It was nice to be out here in the countryside and all of that, but man, my brain is just a giant mush pile. <laughs> like I got to yeah. start working it out. I know, I know. I, you know, it's really funny. We were talking yesterday, and you were telling me about where you are, and I'm like, I know this town, and I, I'm like racking my brain trying to think. And I went went home, talked to my wife, and she's like, "Uh, we got our car from there." So you know exactly where I am. I know exactly where it's at. And I was just like, why can't I remember what town this is? So anyway, yeah, I get it. My brain is also just like fizzling. I, I uh, so before I went live uh, with you this morning, um, I, I, I'm in the studio. It's my first time hooking up to this internet, getting all this gear hooked up. And I think I have everything because this is stuff I used for my prior live streams. Uh, for some reason, the camera is not communicating with the laptop. So I'm like, oh, no big deal. I got this uh, big desktop computer that I had at home and it's gonna be my office computer. So we're good. I got a keyboard, I got a webcam, like we're gonna make this work, right? Don't have a mouse. <laughs> so prior to the live stream, I had to go run to the store, uh, go buy like a cheapo $10 mouse and uh, run back over here, hook it all up. Uh, and literally like seconds before we went online, and went live, the computer has a Windows update, you know. <laughs> I, think, love it. I think every time I go live, no matter how much I prepare, there's a post going live panic. Yes. Every single time, yes. there's some sort of panic. Something's not working, and it was working two seconds ago. So Yeah, it's so I'm crazy. And, <laughs> yeah, I guess it's a normal thing. I mean, I got here like three hours ago, because I'm like, I want to make sure everything looks right, sounds right. And uh, literally, it's just like one fire after another. So. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we have a good time. Hopefully the viewers here have a good time. Uh, let's see. Let me uh, go to the comments here. Let's see where everyone is tuning in from with my new with my new ten dollar uh, <laughs> iHome <laughs> mouse that may or may not work. Uh, oh God! Well, I can see them. So you can I see them. Yeah, yeah, I see, see there was Greece, India, Texas, Sacramento, Hollywood, Florida, New York City. Uh, Barcelona, South Africa, San Diego, Puerto Rico, uh, more India, Russia. So hi, everybody. Wow. Yeah, we got like an international audience here. This is great. I always I like that. I, I think it's it's also people coming from different perspectives tend to give different questions. For sure. So I like that. Yeah. And speaking of questions, uh, I, I think I put this comment yesterday, but it looks like it might be gone. Uh, so for those of you that are watching live right now, let me know in the comment section, what questions do you have for Lindsay? Um, I've got a few questions that I've uh, kind of, you know, things that I want to know, uh, but I want to give you guys a platform and an opportunity to ask Lindsay any questions. Um, you know, and I would say nothing is off topic. Is there anything off topic, Lindsay, that you don't want to cover? <laughs> You'll know it if you hear it. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good. All right. So you've got Lindsay's an open book today. So uh, let us know in the comments section what questions you guys have, whether it be about uh, obviously the, the technical side of shooting, which she is very, very technically proficient. Um, you know, the creative side, the business side. Uh, and speaking of the business side, um, 
you know, for the few, maybe there's like one person out of the, you know, people that are watching right now that are like, who is this lady? Um, so how long have you been in uh, photography? How long have you been a professional uh, in the space? So what, how I like to word it is more than half of my life, uh, which is true. So <laughs> I actually, I was one of those people that was like ridiculously lucky in that I found photography when I was like 12, uh, I was a 12 year old. I was going to like this little photo club with all these old people and they were encouraging the little kid, you know, oh, yeah. it was really sweet. But by the time I was 15, I knew it's what I wanted to do. And I started a business. And so one of the reasons that I like to teach and share is that like, I've been working on this since I was 15. I've had a ton of time to get decent and figure out business. And a lot of people don't have that. Uh, so I have been in New York for 10 years. Well, I think it's it's closer to 12 now. Um, and I've been doing portraits and I did portraits and weddings and babies and all of that since I was 15. So it more than wow. half my age. That's crazy. That's so crazy. It's a pretty, pretty fun, uh, pretty fun thing to to have gotten started early. You know, yeah, like I think at 15 years old, I was playing video games with <laughs> friends and um you know, esports wasn't a thing back then. Uh, but if it was, <laughs> you know, maybe I'd be a pro esports player at this point. I could see I that. I mean, listen, your studio space looks like you're on it right now. I know, I know. Seriously, I feel like I should be live streaming uh Call of Duty games. You should but, be on uh, Twitch. <laughs> I, I, I I've got a Twitch too, so don't be surprised if you see me do that in the future. <laughs> but I wish I would have gotten started. Really? No, oh I, I know one photographer who uses it to like live stream, uh, like critiques and, and retouching mm. and all that stuff. But I'm, I hate to be one of those yeah. old people, but it's like another one to learn. Like, I, let me oh, let me boy. be really good at a few. I don't mind picking up a new one, but I want right. to I want to put like effort into like, let Just me have like, like two that I put a ton of effort, maybe three, but not like six. Are we going to see you on TikTok? But, Is that going to be a thing? So I signed up. Nice. And I, I have a video that was like kind of a behind the scenes, ready to go. And then I've just been afraid to put it up. Like I, oh my I, I feel like it's that first, like that, I just got to get some stuff up there. Even bad stuff. You sure. like, you can take it down. Right. So if I'm embarrassed, I, I think hope it's so. <laughs> I hope so. But you know, if it's terrible, I mean, it, that's everyone starts somewhere, you know, you go back to it, you laugh, you know, laugh with others. Oh, if, if it's that bad, you know, it's, it's, it's fun times. And, um, I adore my boyfriend. However, I don't think he would do the stupid dances with me. So I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to focus on like photography related stuff. I like how you mentioned the word boyfriend. Cause the first question from Sean, Sean is, are you single? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Sean, Sean. Now Gotta I'm love it. in my boyfriend's house. My boyfriend's an awesome photographer, uh, Chris Knight. So you're going to have trouble competing with him. But uh, thanks, Sean. Sean, I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's doubly Sean. That gives gets him some <laughs> points, you know. He, he has a built-in uh, pet name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sean, Sean. <laughs> All right. So we got Jared here. Uh, how do you get over creative ruts? Okay. So my top suggestion for this is don't rely on the creativity all to come from you. Um, so, I mean, of course it depends on the type of work that you're doing, but because I do fashion and beauty photography, I'm working with hairstylists or makeup artists or wardrobe stylists. And so a lot of times I'll say to them, Hey, what's something that you wanted to do? Because then I feed off of their excitement and their ideas and they present me something. And then it's my problem solving of how to make that thing look good. So right. it's not like it's all on me all the time to feel like I have these great ideas. Like, find good people that have good ideas and it makes you look better. Totally. Uh, that's, that's actually like, for me has been everything, you know, having a, a team of creative people for me, I'm, I don't know, uh, maybe it's different for me, but I feel like I get into a lane and then I just stay in that lane cause it's comfortable and I know it and I could easily do whatever I want within that lane. And after a while it gets kind of boring and it's less mm -hmm. creative and so um, like my makeup artist that I've worked with for many years will come to the table and she brings ideas and I'm like, let's see if I can make that happen. And sometimes I make it happen. Other times I'm like, well, so I have the info that I need and the, the experience that I need and we'll try it again later, you know, and, and try to do it bigger and better each, each time out. So um, totally creative. Reps happen though. And I get why also a lot of times 
we stick with the same things, uh, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing this professionally, because like, okay, I found something that works, something that I can right. deliver upon for the client, something I can be known for stylistically. And so it doesn't feel like it's always a, a good idea to like venture far off in a different direction, right. but it usually is as long as it's not on a paid job. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. At that point, you just need to, you know, do what you need to do, get paid, get paid and move on. So yeah. Let's see, Robert Gordon photography. Uh, how hard is it for an older photographer to break into fashion, beauty, and magazine work? Uh, he's not saying that you're old, by the way. He, <laughs> maybe he is old. Well, so what's funny is this is uh, Robert Gordon photography. I see him all the time in comments. I see him in groups and Instagram and whatnot. But awesome. my marketing employee, uh, his name is Robert Gordon. So like there's regularly where I want to like wow. respond. I'm like, oh, it's the wrong person. I have to like, yeah, there's two Robert, Robert Gordons. <laughs> um, so Robert, Robert Gordon photography. Hi. Uh, so this is actually a, a, I was actually talking about this literally yesterday. Um, so the age thing, it's not necessarily uh, important. And so the photographer I was referring to, so uh, this photographer's name is Howard Schatz. If you look him up, up uh, he was really he became really well known for a lot of the underwater work he did so if you see like the dove campaigns where the girls are floating underwater with this beautiful fabric like he shot those he did these crazy uh sets that looked almost like uh, the kind of last suppery all underwater like really cool stuff um anyway he i believe i'm going to get this wrong he was either he was a doctor of some sort i think an ophthalmologist uh but he had a career as an ophthalmologist left it like how long does it take to actually get that degree and then start your career? So he certainly wow. wasn't young. Stop it. And he has dozens of books. He's super successful commercially. He's older now. I think he's just about 80. Uh, but the point is he had a very, very full career regardless. So there are always going to be the really young people that come out of nowhere and they're the hot new thing with this fresh idea. Uh, but then there's always going to be a need for people that are visual problem solvers and good with people and uh, do the job right, not just new, fresh, and young. So right. it's a it's yes, no, but I don't know. I mean, no one's ever asked my age or it's not really a thing. No, I, you know, I think at times, and I don't know if this is the case with Robert or not, but I know for a lot of people, um, when things aren't working out for them, they start to think, like, what is it that... Mm -hmm has nothing to do with my work, my creativity, you know, technicality, my, you know, those things. And they, they're like, well, it's because of my age. I'm too young. I'm too old. Um, you know, all of these different things. And I think that that has very little to do, um, you know, with your success, with, with being able to, uh, you know, start a business, grow a business, uh, submit to magazines. I mean, I don't think anyone knows unless you tell them your age in a in an email like, "Hey, I want to submit this, you know, set of images to a magazine." By the way, I'm 47 years old or I'm 87 years old. Like you don't, they 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 won't know. They just look at the work. And I think where maybe they could tell if you were older is if you have like an old style of photography. Like sure. I, I've seen that happen where it's just like that very traditional, you know, like the face looking at the camera and then they have this one off in the corner of the picture, you know, like old school, uh, 80s, uh, school Listen, portraits. It's coming back. It's coming back. I know, as I so no, <laughs> it, there's, it's there's, kind a, of funny. there's a datedness that sometimes that you'll see in, in people's work where there's a certain, uh, it's not being aware of trends and that doesn't mean that your work has to be trendy, but for example, there's certain like, like the lip liner in a certain time for like that makeup is not still in unless you're trying to pay an homage to that, you know, it, it's right. that thing. So it also might be sometimes the work gets dated because you might be working with some people that aren't up on trend. So it's, it's uh, again, like the good people. Um, and one other uh, comment I just wanted to make about that. I, uh, I heard a quote and I'm going to totally butcher it. Uh, but literally it was yesterday that was said in the, the fashion industry, there's always, um, always a place at the table for you regardless of age because if somebody says they want something uh fresh and edgy they usually mean young but if they want someone who's uh reliable and established they mean someone who's old so like it, it's about finding the client who wants either end of that spectrum uh, right. and I, I thought that made a lot of sense so it's just finding the right fit i like it i like it very good let's see let's go to the next one here um hmm this is an interesting question how do you dream of creativity at night 
it happens once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, oh my God, wait, can I tell you a, a funny story? Yes, so, we're the only ones, it's just between us. <laughs> this one's not bad, it's not embarrassing, but it's funny. <laughs> so this, this house is gorgeous. So it was, this, 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 this does actually relate. Okay, guys, it'll come back yeah. around. Um, so it was a barn built in 1790 and it was converted into a home in the 60s. And so the bedroom is this awesome like barn loft. It's really, really beautiful. But so last night, middle of the night, I'm sleeping and I hear a noise. Mm. And I'm like, what is that? It sounds kind of like a bird. <laughs> oh boy. Tell me and it's I, not an owl. It was a bat oh, in no. my bedroom. And I freaked out. So I flipped oh. the light on and I'm watching. He's fluttering. So I like hid underneath the uh, the the blankets and I'm like waiting till I heard the noise stop. And then I like, pay, like looked out and I could hear him over there. So I opened up oh. the windows and then I left and slept on the couch. So hopefully he left. Oh my gosh. I would have been like, burn the whole house down. Just start over. <laughs> no way. Start over. <laughs> I mean, it literally is a barn house. So like, yeah, I actually grew up in the, in the country. Uh, so I'm not like that freaked out by it, but it was definitely mm -hmm. when you're sleeping, you hear this. Okay. That came back to dreams. <laughs> but I was dreaming and it woke me up. Um, mm -hmm. I think what happens is it's not that I come up with new ideas when I sleep. It's that sometimes I work through problems. Um, mm -hmm. Like I actually feel myself thinking about something and I'm just repeating it over in my head as I sleep. And it, sometimes it just gives me a different way to think about it. So it's not that I come up with fresh ideas. It's that I, I work through some things. Um, yeah, you problem solve. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one of those people that uh, comes up with great ideas when you sleep, but uh, maybe that's like with the 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 Dali type people. They do a lot of drugs, mm -hmm. go to sleep, and then they come yeah. up with ideas. It's not particularly my approach. Maybe some other people. That's how you yeah. do it. <laughs> hey, you know, whatever whatever it takes. I we're, we're artists. Whatever works. Yeah, it's like whatever you know, as long as it doesn't kill you or kill others, I guess. But. Um, I, I don't know. I've always found like for me, I do and I come up with my most creative ideas when I'm running, like if I'm exercising for sure. some reason, I don't know what it is, but like my brain just hones in on like creative ideas. And I feel like it's always the most inopportune time to come up with ideas because then I'm just like, can't write it down. <laughs> yeah, like I can't write it down. And I feel like I need to stop right now and just go do, do it. it you know, and then, but I'm in the middle of doing something else. So it's gotta yeah. be something with the, the repetition and taking your mind out of it. Like it's gotta right. be something I wouldn't know. Cause I hate running so much. Oh, geez. Trust me. I don't love it, but I, I will say that there's something to this like runner's high that you get when you, you know, start doing it for a little while. Uh, and then it gets to the point to where I come up with these creative ideas and now I want to go run. Cause now I'm like, I can't be creative unless I'm actually going out for a run. So let me go out real quick and go do that. It will take you for it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you've got beautiful like trails and stuff near you. Like, there are like there's, so there's one. Take, take advantage yeah. of it. Take advantage of it. It's, it's, it's going to be a thing. Um, yeah, so <laughs> you walk it. Hey, it's okay. You know, hiking, hiking is uh, totally like a thing. Hiking. Yeah, it's totally, uh, totally a thing. So uh, James says, what's your advice on getting paid work from brands um, you would love to work with? How do you reach out to them? What's the best strategy? So you work with, a, 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 you've been very fortunate to work with a lot of different brands over the years, mm -hmm. uh, including some of the big ones, you know? Um, so I, I think you'd be great to talk about this. What, what do you think? So the the answer that I have is the one that people hate to hear. It's the one that I hated to hear myself, but it's the one that's most true. Mm -hmm. Not all, but most of my bigger opportunities in one way, shape, or form had come from someone else I had worked with at some point later recommending me for that job. It right. could be a makeup artist um, that, like, for example, there was a there's a company that. Well, okay, so Pat McGrath, um, mm -hmm. Pat McGrath's a uh, cosmetic company. The way that I had worked with them is that uh, two of their makeup artists that would do, so Pat got uh, hired to design the makeup for a runway show. And, and so it, she would need a whole team to do this. So two of the makeup artists that she would work with in the runway show, I worked with all the time. And so my work was throughout their portfolio. And so my name came up a few times. And so eventually she mentioned like, Hey, check this out, check this girl out. Like, let's see if we can work with her. It wasn't me marketing to them. It wasn't, it was just because I'd worked with the right people. So 
I've done this in the past strategically where I'll mm -hmm. look and I'll see that, okay, so Mark Jacobs, they have this particular brand ambassador, um, the head of their education program, the head of the artist training, whatever it may be, figure out who that person is. I reach out to them. Uh, I schedule a test shoot, we get to know each other. And then eventually I try to work my way into a recommendation or, hey, do you have any new projects coming up that might be a good fit? Um, so the easiest advice is to figure out who's already working with these people and become part of their team, part of their club. Like how do you, how right. do you get into that? Um, now, that being said, um, it's, always recommended that you don't rely on one tactic if there's a company that you really want to work with. So I will work with the artists that are already part of their team. Um, I will send out promos, like physical promos. I will send out emails. I'll try phone calls. And it sounds like a lot, but it's a lot if you have like 250 or a thousand different clients that you want to work with. But if you've got like 25 that you really want to go after, it's a lot more manageable. You set aside two days a month, you can get all of that done. If you just, those two days a month are going after my 25. Right. Totally. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I think it's all about just being creative with uh, getting their attention, you know, and obviously if you knock on the door and they don't open the door, then, you know, knock on a window, you take some tiles out from their roof and peek your head down there, you know, like you do whatever it is that you got to do to get on that company's radar. And I think that you've, uh, you've been able to do that better than most, you know, so these are, these are golden tips. And I've been in New York now for over 10 years. And sometimes I'll have people tell me that they first heard of me or saw my work seven years ago and mm -hmm. seven years later is when they worked with me. So it's, it's the long tail for a lot of people right. don't make it. 10 years. And so who, you know, and it might take 10 years for there to be a good fit for that first time sure. to work together. Um, just another example is I just worked with um, Morphe Cosmetics. They mm -hmm. do like they're, they're known for their brushes, but they work with a lot of influencers. And uh, I had worked with the producer. So guys, the producer is basically the person who puts together the shoot, um, everything. I'd worked with the producer on another job five years ago. I didn't know where she moved to, what her like, what she was doing, and then she reached out at her new job and was like, "Oh, hey, this is a perfect fit for you." So it's like it's it's those sorts of things that tend to to lead to most opportunities for me, at least. Totally, very good. So uh, Winnie two two three says to Lindsay, "What niches of photography do you think will definitely survive through the COVID situation, and which won't?" Oh my goodness. Oof. Oh, this man. is a scary one to even think about. I'm curious. I, I mean, I don't know how far down these comments go, but I want to hear what other people think as well. Uh, I'm just, I'm actually curious because my mm -hmm. first thing was that um, part of me thinks, I don't want to say niches per se, but I'm going to say styles, um, mm -hmm. that very um, authentic, no effort look, I think you're going to see, it, it's not the no effort, it's also the authentic, like it's not as right. rehearsed. Um, this is shown to... Uh, be more resounding with Gen Xers. Um, uh, and well, actually it's all the way down the line. Basically anyone 25 and younger would probably be uh, where it's uh, appropriate. But long story short, um, there's going to be an emphasis on less production and less big gatherings and less big groups. And so Gucci actually did a campaign. They just ran it like last week and it was mm -hmm. shot and styled and hair and makeup and the whole thing by the models. Wow. And the photography looks good mm -hmm. enough because there's that style of like, I'm not trying. And so it right. kind of just blends right in with that. So um, I also, there was something that was posted yesterday. I forget which organization um, about fashion, just like big houses, everything in general, uh, moving a little bit more in the direction of sustainability and Oh God, see, I'm so bad. I forget what company, some major fashion uh, brand said that they're not doing traditional um, fashion weeks anymore. Like they're out. Wow. Um, it, like, was, it, was it Mark Jacob? It was something like that. It was a huge yeah. company. So I mean, I certainly think fashion weeks will change. Um, I, I for sure think like runway photography, like that's kind of, that stuff's going to mm. kind of go away. So yeah, um, more authentic. I'm surprised that that's lasted as long as it has. You know, yeah, but in the fashion industry, people like the pomp and circumstance of it all. Um, yeah. So it's been something people held on to because it it feels special. 
Right. Um, and, and also with some of the the bigger brands, like part of the brand is feel special. Like you want to wear their clothing and feel important, feel beautiful. And so that made sense. But I think a lot of brands now are like, you know, feel you, feel unique, do your own thing, which is the opposite of going and sitting in rows and watching people walk right. down a line. So, yeah. So what, what did people say? Did anybody have any other things? Yeah, let's see. Uh, I'm going through the comments here. Um, Cosplay photography. Sports are done. Sense. I don't think sports are done. Uh, I, that's that's a tough one. I don't think you can kill a sports uh, industry as a whole. If they're still doing games without people for a bit, they can social distance the the photographers. So right. I think it'll change. Obviously, like they're not doing crowd interactions, and there's not going to be yeah. energy. People like yeah, no, yeah, nothing. you're not going to see any of that. <laughs> oh man, it's going to be weird. Yeah, Definitely. cosplay photography, which I'm not sure how big cosplay photography is. I feel like that's like its own little fun niche of photography, but uh it's super fun. But yeah, yeah, I'm a uh, fan. Tim I mean, Tim I'll said it was it was Gucci that abandoned yeah. uh fashion shows. I knew it was a huge brand that did it. It was slightly shocking, but I mean, if if this is the direction things are going, it's brands like that that perhaps lead the way. So makes right. sense. Very true. Let's see. We've got, uh, let me see where I was with the questions here. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. Um, so Malaki King, as a photographer that's starting out, how did you build your team? Uh, slowly and with lots of practice and experimentation. There's there's no real uh, secret to it. I, when, when I started off, you found a lot of people on Model Mayhem. It, that's not mm -hmm as much how you do it anymore it's not it's not that it's wrong it's just i, I find more people on instagram and things like that yeah. uh but so i'd plan a shoot and i'd say hey guys uh you know i'd, I'd have an idea okay we're gonna do ice queen all right I'm making it up but that's actually a shoot i did so ice mm -hmm. queen here's my inspiration here's uh kind of what i want the makeup to look like the hair to look like i would go and i would reach out to people on model mayhem or wherever on social media pitch them the idea and then we do a shoot and part of it had to do with people's skill set, but mm -hmm. honestly, most of the time it has to do with someone's vibe. Like right. if you don't get along, it doesn't matter how skilled someone is. Like, oh man, there's there's this one wardrobe stylist that I worked <laughs> with. And she was so, so, so had so so talented, but tons of connections, great clothing. Mm -hmm. We did not mesh for person personalities. I did two shoots with her, and then I'm like, I cannot do this. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> So yeah, for starting out, um, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can work with hair and makeup from a local salon if you're not in a, in a city. I did that in the beginning. Uh, there was uh, when I was in college, down the, the I went to Syracuse University. So um, there's there was a this one hair and makeup salon. I went over and I got in contact with one of the hair and makeup artists. And so I would actually bring the model there. They would schedule in part of their day. They'd have a little slot to do the hair and makeup. I take the model back and then go shoot them on campus. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, um, you know, in the beginning when you're building your team, I know when I started, I was so desperate to have that help that I was like anyone that had the skills to like do makeup or do hair or to uh, style a shoot. I was like, I'm all for it. Right. Like come and work with me. And then over time, I saw what you're saying, which is that you want to work with people that you have a vibe with people that you could communicate with them and tell them, Hey, I have this idea. Or if they bring an idea to the table and you think it's lame <laughs> that you could communicate with them and be like, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't think that's going to come out right. And that they don't like hate your guts. I mean, they might hate your guts, but they're not going to like, you know, be difficult about it. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, know that, no, probably, I know that fear. That yeah. fear I want to tell you that I don't think that what you just did is working. I, yeah. I try to communicate as much as beforehand as possible. But like if a, if a look is in front of me, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. I take a few photos and then show them why it's bad. Right. I was right. Going, oh, man, you know, all I'm looking at is this or like mm, yeah. a little, like, I think your eyes look a little heavy or whatever. Yeah. But so, have, you know you what? Had, have you had that happen though, where you show them that and they're like, no, I think it looks awesome. Um, yeah. So a couple of times what I do is I shoot it crazy briefly. I get them a shot mm -hmm. they're happy with and I ask us to move on. Like, yeah, I got something yeah. that they I'll retouch one shot for them. Mm -hmm. They can use it on social. I'm just never reposting it. Right. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 
I've I've had those uh, I've had those shoots myself. So. Yeah, just play nice and. Yeah, but you know what? That's too part much time. Of, totally. I mean, that's part of the collaboratory, you know, part of doing this. Like, if everyone is doing everything the way you want it to be done, then you're back into what we were talking about at the beginning of the stream, where it's like, how do you really express that creativity when you're just doing what you want to do all the time? Um, you and know. I will say it's a happy medium um, because what used to happen to me is. It, it was different if there's only one person, but let's say there's hair and makeup and wardrobe on a set. Yeah. Uh, there has to be someone steering the ship. Mm -hmm. Otherwise people just like pull in every different direction. So what happened in the beginning is I, you know, I wanted to play nice. So like uh, hair would do something crazy and then makeup would do something crazy. And then wardrobe would throw something on that doesn't match. And it was just, it was just yeah. bad. So like, you gotta have someone kind of controlling it, but letting people add something it it's a balance it takes practice for sure i I, yeah. I don't think i worked that out for for a while yeah you know i imagine when somebody becomes a captain of a ship for the first time you know it's not smooth sailing the the first few times that they go out you know it takes time for them to you know find a groove and it's it's no different for a photographer uh no matter who you are you know it's it's going to be uh it's going to be fun so <laughs> Let's see. Uh, going through the comments here. Da, 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 da. Uh, we got some thanks being sent out here uh, for sharing the satellite program. I'm so happy to be able to practice with it. Uh, it is kind of the sense for <laughs> photographers for me. Have so tell this? me about this. No, I haven't seen this. What is this? So it's a, a program that is a virtual studio. Mm -hmm. And so it's using 3D modeling and lighting and whatnot. So you pick a model. But you can change everything about her or mm -hmm. him. You can change facial hair and, and the hair color and the, face, the pose and the makeup and all that stuff. Uh, and then you have every lighting tool you can imagine available to you. Every modifier, different sorts of lights. You can change the height, the direction, the size of the room. You got V-flats, flat, like everything. And so it simulates it in real time. It might take, you know, half a second to update. And then you can actually change your focal length of your camera, compose and take a picture of it. And so, wow. um, you know, I've got a lot of tutorials on lighting and some people are like, you know, I, I want to practice, but A, I can't practice with a model now, clearly. Um, mm -hmm. Or it's that they, you know, I, I want to try this thing, but I don't have this modifier. I'm not convinced I want to buy it, but I want to practice. And so um, I've actually been using it a lot. Uh, I'm planning when this is all over to work on some lighting guides and mm -hmm. I can't practice them before I do it. So I've been doing it in this program. Um, and uh, you should definitely check it out because it's, it takes maybe, I'd say it takes like 15, 20 minutes to get used to how everything works. But once you get it, it's like, it just, it's like, oh, I'm back in the studio. It's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Set a light program is what it's called. Yeah, and I believe there's a I have a discount code for people that's Lindsay fifteen, I think. Ooh, Lindsay fifteen. I think that's so, right for fifteen percent off. Um, because I wrote them, I'm like, this is really cool, and uh, it, it helps people out. So. Totally, totally. So yeah. let's take a look. There's another question here, which my El Cheapo mouse doesn't want to no. work. So <laughs> is that true? That. Can I click on him? I think so. Here it is. I got it. Well, F. All right. So, hey, Lindsay, big fan. Uh, you always mentioned to go from good to great. You need to have a concept style, a vision for beginners. How can we find that? Yeah. So, Will has obviously watched some of my classes. So, thanks. Uh, so, basically, what we're talking about is that when you have a style, like your unique vision, the unique way through which you see the world, and then you shoot. Uh, conceptually. So you have an idea behind what you're trying to say with your photographs. That's kind of, that's really what elevates you and makes you those photographers that people recognize, they remember, you know, not just the ones that blend in with everyone else. Okay. So the question was, how do you figure that out? How do you figure out your style when you're first starting off? Um, I think there's a couple of things. I think when you first start off, you should shoot everything, like give it a try. Um, I first started taking pictures of like nature photography and because I like to travel, um, I love traveling. So I was like, oh, okay, so that's what I, I probably want to do. I want to go travel places. And that's, I'm not patient enough for that. So I, I, it's nice, but not what I'm going to do. Um, and then I did weddings and weddings were nice, but I was always tired and it was just a lot to deal with. And it didn't, didn't quite fit me. And it wasn't as creative as I wanted it to be. 
Um, And so it was me trying everything that helped me find at least the general direction. So first you got to find your, your subject matter. Do you photograph babies? Is it sports? Is it fashion? Like what, which one of those categories? Um, From there, there's a couple of things you can do. You can shoot a ton and then look at your favorite images, the ones you find are most successful and see what they have in common. Like it's all right. So the ones I think are really hitting home, the ones that I think are memorable, what dots can I connect? Oh, I was using hard light in both of these. Oh, they were both really colorful. Oh, they're, you know, whatever. So the exercise that I give people is if you've been shooting a little bit, like more than like, you, I'm not talking about doing it for a year. You, you have to at least have shot enough that you have some little bit of body of work. Mm-hmm. Um, if right now you had to pick three photos and that's all you could show the world on, on your website. And it tells people who you are, what you're all about, what your vision is, what three photos would those be? And then look at what those have in common. Basically cut out everything else. And from those three, build a portfolio back up where there's a cohesion. Um, And it takes time to do that. But I realized the images I liked were clean, bold, graphic. Uh, The women look strong and elegant. And so now if you look at my portfolio, I think nearly every image, whether it's a portrait or it's beauty or it's fashion, it has those elements. So eventually, even though style in the beginning, people say you want to niche down and just focus on one thing. Some of the great photographers, like an an Irving Penn, for example, will go Mm -hmm. like crazy great. He could photograph a nude fashion portrait or a cigarette butt, and it still was his style. Right, Uh, right. You just have to eventually get your style get your specialty and then you get to hear and you can do whatever you want. <laughs> totally. You could do it with anything too, which is always a beautiful thing to see. So this is uh, uh, kind of interesting. So PM says, uh, Lindsay, I know you like playing with complex lights and gels in your photos, but sometimes uh, you don't prefer the simplicity of one or two lights. If you look at my Instagram, the most recent four posts I did, uh, I believe were all with two lights. One Mm -hmm. large light source. It was a large umbrella, extra large umbrella with diffusion on the left of my subject, I think is where it was placed. And then a big white V flat to the right to fill in the shadows. And then I had a light in the background to lighten it up. So to answer your question, uh, the right lighting setup for the right concept for the right job. So um, I like complex because it challenges part of my brain. And I think... A lot of times when people go complex, it, they don't look like they knew what they were going in for. They just throw a ton of lights at it and just cross their fingers. So I like when I can make it look purposeful, like every light had a job, every light was achieving something, but it doesn't always have to be like that. One or two lights is fine. I'm going to pull this up here while you're talking about it. So uh, let's see. All the ones on the the brown background there. These. Okay. So yes. like this one. Ah. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, yeah, to be signed in. But no. yeah, all, all of those <laughs> are done with two lights. All the Very lights, cool. yeah, all the brown ones on, on the top. And then actually, not that you can click on them, but if you go down, you see the ones that are with the blue? These uh, here? Yeah. So uh-huh. those are done with one strobe, uh, one constant light, and then window light all mixed together. I did constant light. I did a modeling light and a strobe. And like, it's complicated, but it was technical. Mm-hmm one light, but it was three light sources. I like messing around with things. Yeah, that's awesome. So basically for you, it's like whatever it takes to get the job done. If it's one light, two lights, three lights, constant. Otherwise, uh, you you just make it work. And I'm okay with being a gear nerd. I know you relate to it because you're Mm -hmm. more gear nerdy than me. I'm gear nerdy (laughs) in like the fact that I like to use a lot of gear. And I think you're gear nerdy in that you like to use a lot of gear and know everything about that gear there's possible to know. Um, Yeah. (laughs) It was the old school retail side of me that, that made that happen. Yeah. It's pretty bad. I think it's worked for you. It's fine. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm here talking to you, so it's, it's good. It's, it's definitely works. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty awesome. Let me get rid of this thing on the screen here. Let's go back to us. Uh, There we go. Okay. Um, so where are we here? Do, 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 do. Mr. Camera Junkie, Lindsay, do you have a type of photography that you do for yourself? 
So my creative side of, of photography for myself is I do fine art nudes. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't make any money from shooting nudes. It's just, it's really nice because I can make anything I imagine. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, I've create characters and I play with light. Like I've done paint with light with nudes and I've created a character where she's a goddess and I've done light studies, all that stuff. Um, but I, I do also take pictures when I travel and go on vacation, but I literally never look at them again. Like yeah. I, I don't think I've looked at my photos from my last six years of trips. Wow. Maybe, maybe one trip I did. We went to the Galapagos. And mm -hmm. I really like animals, so I went back through those because I wanted to see those. That was about it. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I got pictures of the blue-footed boobies pooping in unison. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Wow. So, like, my wildlife photography, I catch those moments. Like, I'd see? be really good. I'm yeah. telling you. Except for the fact that you have to be out in the wild and, you know, you got to walk around a little bit and, you know, you maybe – it was on a boat. Be attacked by animals, you know. No, no. You're, you're on a boat where they like feed you three meals a day. Oh boy. Yeah. No. So you're on one of these like glam glam cruises, basically. No, you can't. You actually. <laughs> no, there's no true story. You can't go to the Galapagos to like. There's one island where you can actually fly into it and be there, but the other ones to control the amount of people. There's like a certain number of people that can be on an island in a day, and you can't just go like on your boat. It's that these are guides that right. have the you know conservationist uh experience yeah. and so the only way you can do it is on the fancy boats it'd be somewhere mm -hmm. fancier than others and so yes yeah, so that's, that's my awesome favorite. though it was for my that's mom's awesome. birthday we went so hey it's that's fun whatever you could do to get out there that's that's super fun i mean i th this question i feel like you kind of answered it i feel like it's going to be the same answer as before um but uh how did you start getting fashion designers to work with you as a beginner pretty much yeah. the same as building your team right yeah, I, I think now it's a little bit easier. Like you can actually reach out to designers directly on Instagram. Like that wasn't really a thing before. Right. But in fashion photography, there's a person whose job is that they are a wardrobe stylist. They get the clothes for you. So I didn't reach out to a lot of the fashion designers. They did. But mm -hmm. in the very beginning, I went to uh, college programs. I would go to uh, colleges or universities that have a fashion design major and then Ask the person in charge, put me with any in, in contact with any students that might want their pieces shot. Um, right. So, uh, you know, I, I have like FIT around the corner in New York, but when I was uh, in college, you know, Syracuse University had a fashion program and um, I just got hired by Kent State to shoot their fashion program um, pieces. So, like, students want it, the schools want it. So, it's definitely. Sure. And if they can get a Lindsay Adler to do it, I mean, that's like, come on now. Like who's, who's, who's not, who's going to turn that down? They they actually said that I can do one shot of each of the pieces. That's a little more standard. And then the second one, I can do whatever I want. I was like, oh, oh wow. Fun. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I'm excited. We got Irene Rudnick in the house. She thought she missed us. She was I saying mean, hi. <laughs> hi. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 going through the rest of the comments here. Um, David was saying, uh, there's something to that when I lift or when I weight lift, it helps me. Yeah. See, I'm telling you there's something to it. I don't know what it is. I, I want to see, I want to see an Instagram story of you running. Wait, can I, can back. I swim? Uh, can that, I mean, we if have you a could pool swim and... across a lake, no. like nonstop that you, it has to be like, you have to can do I, it for a little while, you I know? So I, we've, I haven't had a pool. Like when I grew up, we had a pool, but like I haven't had a yeah. pool until, and now this house, Chris actually didn't want a pool. He specifically didn't want one, but he liked the right. house. And so he's, he's putting it all on me to maintain it and take care of it. And so we gets open next week. And so I like swimming. And so this is good. Just, just take it. Okay. Just, you could do it. You I'm could gonna, do it. I, and I got, I've got these headphones that they, um, they're underwater, but they don't go in your ears. They, they're on the outside. And so right. they vibrate the bone or whatever it is, like their, oh. their bone conduction. Oh, it's so weird. It's I, I haven't tried it yet. So anyway, my ideas will be swimming. <laughs> so Angel uh, was asking, does Canon have any plans in place for open to public workshops after the pandemic? Um, not that they've told me so far. Um, mm -hmm. I know that currently, like I've written up uh, for my own workshops, uh, the mm -hmm. Like I have a very specific guide of uh, what resources I have available for, you know, masks and hand sanitizers, but also, uh, you know, on 
each workshop, one assistant is in charge of cleaning surfaces and, and whatnot, like things like that. But Canon hasn't made any of that known to me at least. Yeah. Yeah. We're still, I think a lot of companies are still trying to figure out what, you know, what life looks like after this coronavirus stuff. So and things change. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure over the next, you know, few weeks, months, you know, next year, things are going to be a lot different. So uh, Irene ch chimed in with this question. Is there still an idea or a theme that you haven't done yet? If so, what is it? Um, so there's 8 billion trillion gazillion themes and ideas I haven't done yet. <laughs> um, one of the things I'm hoping to do when this all gets better um, mm -hmm. is one of my makeup artist friends has a very strong art history background. And so I would like to do uh, a bit of makeup inspired by different painters, sculptors, whatever. Um, because even though I feel like, you know, like I've always been learning and creative in photography, like it's only recently that I've started to realize how much overlap there is in inspiration, regardless of any type of art. So like the way that uh, I will approach creativity for painting like uh, would be the same as makeup would be the same as interior design would be the same as photography. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that's one of my next projects is we did one shot together. That was Mondrian. Um, it's the, the like, color blocking the yellow, red, black lines. I did a, a makeup look like that. Um, so that's the next one. Pretty cool. Uh, we have another question here. It's kind of a longer one. Uh, where do you get your training from? What kind of training and what, would you recommend to a beginner in glamour fashion photography? What should we focus on? Any important guidelines? What is the meaning of life? How far away is <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, just the, just that, just those just things. Um, okay. So I got my training uh, from, well, when I, when I first started being young, um, I went to my local PPA uh, professional mm -hmm. photographers association. We had that professional photographers of America. Uh, we had that in, um, in the town I went to and they were nice enough that they would let a young student come. I had like student fees. It was cheaper. Yeah. Um, so I would go there and every year they would usually bring in at least one speaker to do a longer uh, presentation. And so I did that for years. Um, then I eventually did decide to go to college for photography, but my college degree, I took business political science and photography. So photography was part of it. Um, but I think the most important part of that element is I learned what I didn't want to do. Like I started, I took like photojournalism classes and it just wasn't a good fit for me. Um, right. It's not that I don't think it's fantastic. I just, A, I wasn't good at it and it didn't, I didn't have enough control for what fits my personality. Mm -hmm. um, so my recommendation is if you're beginning in the world of fashion, it sounds easier said than done, but you have to find someone that lets you join them, help on a set, assist, something like that. Because I went through an entire degree in photography and then I went to watch some photographer shoot on set and I learned more there than I did in like two years. Because totally. I was like, oh my God, well, how are they using these flags? I've never seen that modifier before. Oh, look at them problem solving. It was next level. Um, so, you know, people are like, oh, no one wants to share their secrets, but like, for example, I let people come on my sets. I put them to work, um, but I, I do that. So the opportunities exist. You just have to be persistent enough. Um, and then someone says, what should we focus on? Any important guidelines? I mean, you should focus on figuring out what your style is and you should figure out um, who your target clients are and then watch another photographer to see how they handle the business side and the client side of it. Um, you can certainly learn technique from them, but you don't have to. Right. And I totally want to piggyback on that idea of uh, helping out another photographer. I know for me, I went through many, many years of going to workshops. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the first time that you and I met, we met at, and you may not even remember, I remember, um, the uh, WPPI Roadshow Atlanta. Uh -huh. This must oh, have been okay. 2012, 2013, when they used to do roadshows. And I sat behind you before you did your presentation. And I remember we had a conversation about Toastmasters uh -huh. and, I was, and I was talking to you about like, you know, public speaking and, you know, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. And um, so that's how long ago. It was forever ago. That's longer than I thought, actually. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was ages ago. That was back when I was like a young pup in the, uh, <laughs> you know, trying to figure things out. Uh, which I still am trying to figure things out. You know, I, I feel like it's a never ending process yeah. of just, you Always. know, trying to figure things out. But, uh, you know, when I moved to New Jersey, uh, I got the opportunity to help out another photographer who you've probably seen on social media, on Instagram, Gavin O'Neill. Um, I got to help him with uh, some of his photo shoots. And I remember Crazy. everything that I had learned. Uh, Izzy, what? Crazy good. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, like through the roof. Later, because I I'm really curious what his personality is like because his work is good. But yeah, but I, yeah, I, well, God Gavin's plan. Gavin's awesome. But you're I'm it's awesome. you're coming from a guy's perspective, so like you uh -huh. know it might be different. You know, uh, but Gavin is like super phenomenal. super cool guy, phenomenal for ph photographer. I I I think um, work great models. Beautiful yeah, work. yeah. I mean. Some of the best models. I, I, you know, there was one time, one of the photo shoots we were, uh, I would say this is maybe second or third one I'm on set with him. And, uh, and I come in and um, there's a model sitting down with the hair and, and makeup and he's just kind of on his computer and, uh, and I walk in and I'm like, yeah, so what are we doing today? Like, what do I need to set up? And uh, he's like, oh, you know, just we're, we're waiting or whatever. And uh, he's like, oh, do you know who that is? And I look over at her and I'm like, I have no clue who that is. And, uh, and he tells me the name and I'm like, yeah, I still have no clue who that is. And he's like, look her up on Instagram. And apparently she's some like Victoria's secret model, like yeah. millions and millions of followers and stuff. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. You he, know, he photographs phenomenal models. Like he has like top tier. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, so it's kind of funny. I've had the opportunity to, to help him out on these shoots. And I know from, uh, from my experience, the things that I had learned up to that point were all helpful but when you see a true professional work at times, it's completely unlike everything that you've learned. You know, I, I thought everything was pre-planned. I mean, surely for me, even at this point, if I was working with someone of that caliber, if they're coming to my studio, I'm planning like a week in advance. Like here are the, here's a mood board. Here's this, here's that. Like, I'm going to do this with the light. I might have backgrounds and stuff already set up. Uh, we literally had nothing set up for the photo shoot. And I'm like, so Gavin, what lights do you want? Cause like, you know, I'm going to go get the lights set up. He does, he does. Um, and he does, uh -oh. you know, usually they start off with natural light and then kind of go to doing some stuff with strobe. Um, but I was so shocked to see that literally like a minute or two before we actually started shooting is when he's like, okay, go grab this V flag, go grab this, go grab that. And it, it was very bizarre to me. He just wanted you to work you like he wanted to see if you could work quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was part of that. And then a part of it was just like, I don't know. I think he's the type of creative person where he like comes up with stuff like right then and there. And he's oh, like, okay, yeah. I'm going to go with it versus for me. Like I have to plan way in advance. If I was doing that where I'm just like, yeah, I don't know, like super casual about it. Like, well, we're, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out in a few minutes. Just hang out. Like, let's look at this funny thing that I saw on Facebook. And I'm like, no, dude, like she's got a, like, this is a Victoria's Secret model. Let's go right now. Like, what do you need? It was nothing like that. So oh, it's interesting. very so, interesting. How did you, um, how did you get him to let you assist him? Yeah. You, so, you know, uh, interesting thing. So I reached out to him. I, I found out about him when I lived in Florida and reached out to him via email. I asked him if, you know, there was an opportunity for me to be able to help him out, uh, to assist him. Uh, cause I was totally willing at that point in my career to fly up to New York, take a week or two, um, to be able to help out. And so, you know, he was very gracious. He emailed me back. He was like, you know, I'd like to be able to do that, but it's kind of complicated with you coming up from Florida. Um, you know, if you're ever in the area for an extended period of time, let me know. And so what, when I moved to New Jersey straight away, I emailed him. I'm like, dude, I am moving to New Jersey. I'm here. Like I will drive over there, like whatever it takes, we're, we're going to make this happen. And so he's like, uh, let's meet up for coffee one day. So went to a coffee shop, uh, talked a little bit. He's like, you know, what are you looking to do? And, and, you know, I told him, I'm like, dude, I, I want to work. Like, I want to figure this thing out. And, and I really admire your work. Um, and I just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a worker, like, I'm not going to be in your way. I'm, I'm very respectful of, of all of that. And uh, so, you know, just give me the opportunity. And so 
uh, the first couple of times that we started working together, I went to his uh, home slash studio and did a bunch of busy work. Like literally he has Jersey. Uh, he, so he, he was in, um, he was in Manhattan and I think now he's in Brooklyn. And so, um, so the first couple of times I went over to his place, I was literally cataloging DVDs because he has all of his photo shoots on DVDs by like date and time. And so, I, I mean, a huge binder of like DVDs with photos on them. I don't know, Cause this is really, <laughs> we're talking like 20. 15, 2016. Okay, not long enough ago to have DVDs. No, no, correct. That's what I'm saying. Like he literally had his entire, you know, he's been doing it for a long time. He's got a, his whole like career's worth of images. And uh, and so I sat there doing the most monotonous busy work of all time. But um, but it was worth it, you know, and, and I kept at it and I tried to do it as best as I possibly could. Uh, kept my mouth shut, didn't complain. And then, you know, got the opportunity to be on these sets with, you know, some of the top models in the industry and, you know, get to figure out the lighting. And it was amazing to me how uh, complicated that I thought it was going to be. And when you actually see it in execution, it's so much more simple in the way that uh, creatives at that level approach a photo shoot. So, um, yeah, like, so that's where I would say I, I'm with you 100%. Being able to sit in and work with a professional who you know, it's been doing this for a long time and to try to like, just see how they work. I think it's one thing to watch, for example, a Lindsay Adler uh, video and see how you do things and how you explain things versus like, I've had opportunities to sit and be a fly on the wall when you're doing your, your photo shoots and, and it's different, it you is. know, it's like, it's a different thing. And it's not to say that you're not giving it in your tutorial, but you know, it, the, the, the gears turning and you'd see people's problem solving. That's why I like yeah. to watch see how they're working through it. Totally. Totally. I totally agree with that. So it's so a long aside, but, uh, but no, a fun it's a aside. I liked that story. <laughs> it was fun, fun times. Um, let's see. So Catherine Pina was saying, uh, what keeps you energized about photography? I never get bored of it. Um, I think it's because there's, uh, there's just endless things I can create forever and ever. Uh, mm -hmm. And if I'm with good people, like I, there, I'm never going to feel like I've shot it all and I'm done. And it's, it's, I've created all I need to create. Yeah. Um, but I have some really amazing friends that are hairstylists, makeup artists, wardrobe stylists. So when I go on set, I'm spending a day hanging out with my friends. Right. Like it's, it's just, let, let's hang out with people that I adore and would hang out with anyway, but we're getting paid or we're making art. Like it's fantastic. We can make cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You can't beat that. Um, we were talking about this before we went live. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Irene was asking, I know you make YouTube videos. Can we expect more of them at some point? Is YouTube on a radar for you? Uh, would love to see more from you on this platform. So I, before you answer this, I agree. I would love to see more from Lindsay Adler on YouTube on this platform, but go ahead, Lindsay. What, what do you say about this? No, so I, I struggle. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I post once a week, pretty right. much something once a week. And one of my, my philosophies for, for teaching is that people are busy and people didn't start when they were 15. And I want them to learn. I want them to learn quickly and I want them to not waste their time. And so I'm a big quality over quantity person. Um, mm -hmm. And I like the impression that I get is that you need to like feed a sh crap ton of <laughs> I don't uh, you into uh, YouTube. And then it's also about like clickbaity titles. And I'm not saying that I wouldn't like to do more, but I, I definitely, anytime I create, I want to make sure it's good. And at the end, someone's like, that was quality. That was worth it. I don't anyone want anyone to think I created something for the sake of it. Cause then that goes against my entire philosophy of teaching. So the answer is, You'll see one at least one a week. I don't know. Maybe maybe Miguel can uh, break down the essentials of what I need to do to if I do more, make it actually worth it. Yeah, you know, I, I'm still trying to figure this out. Probably Irene would be the better person to to kind of comment on this because she's got a, a massive YouTube channel. Um, but I, 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 I know. 
<laughs> I, I think I think you know, uh, like I was actually kind of surprised when I started seeing your your videos uh, like consistently popping up on on YouTube. I was like, oh, this is great. You know, I, I I feel like you were on YouTube like from day one, but then I look back, I'm like, no, I guess you were really like more through Creative Live, and then you had your own paid stuff. Yeah, yep. and yeah, people pay me to do stuff, which is great because you know money. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but totally. I didn't nurture mine, um, and it's. It's weird because I, I am a fan and always have been a fan of of sharing and, and free content. It's just it felt like when I see people on YouTube that do well, it's their whole life. And I would like a life and I like my life as it is. So I if you have anyone wants to give me secrets on how to still share maybe once, maybe twice a week effectively, mm -hmm. like then I'll that I'm good at it. Like then I'm I'm good for it. Um and then eventually when I can actually get out here and uh shoot some stuff that would be great. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Irene. <laughs> That's half the battle. I, you know, it's funny. I kind of had the same, well, not the same, but I had a similar uh, trajectory with YouTube because I really focus more on creating content for other people. So like I was doing Adorama TV uh -huh. and pumping out content for them and then doing yeah. stuff with Sony. Um, and, and all these years that I was doing that, I was not doing much of anything on my own YouTube channel. Every so often I'd be like, well, this doesn't work for Adorama, so I'll just put it on my channel. And it was there wasn't a strategy in place. It was just like, just you know, kind of like when you come in the house and you don't have a place for your keys, you just kind of just chuck them wherever, wherever's <laughs> nearby. You know, it's like, oh, this video, I'll just put it on YouTube. Um, so you know, it, it definitely was one of those things where now I feel like I'm I'm playing catch up. You know, I I had all of this content in other places, and now I'm like, okay, well, how do I build my own? place my own library of content so uh yeah it's definitely a battle and and then irene you'll have to tell me what does better shorter content longer longer content shorter content more often longer content less off. yeah I, I could look this up like i know that some of this stuff exists out there i just haven't put the brain power to it yet i will eventually yeah there there's this whole like I mean, all morning, pretty much, I was watching videos from uh, Daryl Eves and a couple of other like YouTube experts. Um, and, and, you know, what it did for me was like, you figure out certain things, but then it all also kind of paralyzes you in a way, because you mm -hmm. have all these ideas of things that you wanted to do. And then you're just like, well, I can't put those out because they're not going to really resonate with people unless it's like this, you know? And I thought, like there was something I saw yesterday that was like, Gary, you know, Gary Vee says you need to produce 60 pieces of content a day. Right. <laughs> yesterday, like I saw this post and I'm like, okay, shoot me in the head right now. And I love, yeah. to, I love to create, I love to share, but you have to have a life and you have to enjoy what you're doing. So it's like a balance so that you're happy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I hear Gary Vee talking about that all the time and the way that he defines content is very different from what you and I probably think of as okay. content. Like, like for him content, like he'll put like a one word, like Twitter post, you know, like, whoa, that's, that's his piece of content for, for, you know, for Twitter. Like, I don't know if that works for the average, maybe it does. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. All right. That's that's a tough one. Can't do it. <laughs> and Irene did come back and she said longer content. So, longer content. so like, well, well, Irene, we'll talk. I don't want to bore people. Yeah, yeah. We need we need to take that uh, take that into uh, you know in, into a I little vortex concise. here. I love concise and saving people. <sighs> yeah, you know, I, I I will I will say that some of my best videos on my own channel happen to be longer content, um, but I think it was also semi clickbaity. Like one of my most popular videos was talking about uh, shooting wide open versus stopping down. And actually, this would be a good question for you because I've seen both sides of the equation with, with your work. Mm -hmm. um, I was saying in the video, my thesis is that there's a lot of people who will see the images that I shoot in particular, and you've probably had this happen as well, where they say, well, what did you do in retouching to, to get this result? There's this like very high def nature you know to the image and they're thinking there's a post-production side of it and Wait. meanwhile like i look at their portfolio and i'm like well you shot everything at f1.2 or f1.4 meanwhile i'm shooting everything at a higher f-stop which is giving you more detail so uh it's less to do with the retouching and it's more to do with the settings that you're choosing and you can't 
I'm not going to say you can't have it both ways because Irene is a great example. She shoots at f1.2, f1.4. It's beautiful, dreamy, and it's it's sharp. It's got some detail, uh, but it's not the same thing as if you would shoot that at a higher f-stop where you would have more uh, detail to it. So that video that I made was like 20 minutes long mm -hmm. and it's got over a half a million views. I don't even know what it's at right now. Like it's got a lot of views. So the long form content works good, but it takes me back to the question for you. What is your take on shooting wide open versus stopping down? Uh, have you had that scenario where people have asked you like, how did you get that picture so detailed? And then you see their shots are all wide open. It will also say like your images look so sharp on on social. Like how are you posting them? Or like what are you changing? Yeah, um, yeah. What's the secret recipe on Photoshop? You know. So actually, most of my shots are are taken at f11. A majority mm -hmm. of my studio work is at f11. Uh, really, really sharp. Lots of detail. Um, but if I'm going for painterly or romantic, then I'll go the opposite and shoot wide open. So it, again, it's the right tool for the job. But if you look at my if you look at my portfolio, I would say uh, ninety percent is shot at f11. So, right. Yeah. It's, but yeah. it's my style, clean, bold graphic. It's not soft, romantic, dreamy, ethereal. Like right. it's, what are you all about? Pick the right tools. You're, you're, you're on it hundred percent. I think that's where a lot of people have that battle because they want the dreamy and they want that ethereal, but they also want it to be super sharp and it's like, and super detailed. And it's like, I don't know, the two don't really go together. I mean, yeah. I mean, there, there are some things you can do with like contrast to make things sharper. So if you like go dreamy, but it's high, like has a little more contrast to it. I don't, I don't right. Know. I, yeah. I'd have to see the work to be like, I know what you're doing wrong, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. I, I totally agree. So um, let's see. I will take one more question. We're, we're uh, right at about an hour and seven minutes and I know you've got some stuff you got to take care of. So um, we'll, we'll take one more question. In the meantime, uh, Irene was following up here. Uh, she says she finds that for her, uh, much the oh much content doesn't work. People get tired of seeing the same thing. So I completely agree with Lindsay, quality over quantity. Yeah. Good. I, all right. I'm, a, I'm glad. Maybe maybe it's not lost for me forever. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, it's, it's this weird thing with YouTube, though, where I do see a lot of uh, clickbaity things that... Uh, you know, get a lot more attention. Like I noticed recently, um, Jared Poland, for example, he just came out with a video yesterday, I think. Mm -hmm. And the title was something like Sony fail. And it had this like, you know, thumbnail of a, a, a this like sad face with like a, you know, holding an F like a grade. And it says Sony fail on the thing. And it's like, so you watch the video and this is always a pet peeve of mine. Like this is not a knock against him because I see creators doing this all the time. Um, you know, I like your style of video where it's like, give me the information that I need and then let me go about my day. Yeah, and yeah. instead it's like that, you know, thumbnail uh, idea of like Sony fail. You have to watch for like six or seven minutes before you get to the point. And then the fail was something that he covered in a review of this new camera that came out where he was saying he was wearing polarized glasses to try to vlog and he couldn't see the screen. And that was the fail. So you made a thumbnail because the the camera that you were using, you were using these polarized lenses and you couldn't see the screen. And so Sony failed because of that. You make this whole thumbnail. Like to me, that side of it, I'm just like, man, that's kind of dirty. Well, you know, like I, I don't and not to, to hate on photo influencers. Totally I don't not. No, no. Any of them, uh, but I watch beauty influencers. Some right. like there's maybe like three or four. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they do that all the time where they're launching, they're like launching or like introducing some sort of product, but they will like tease to drama. Right. Right. Like drama yes. in the title. And so they talk about the product in the beginning. They do a little bit of the drama and then talk about the product. So like you got it in there somewhere. Right. But it was maybe a 10th of the content for the entire right. like video. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough. And I, I don't know, for me, I, I don't know that I could ever really like, I'm not a very dramatic person as it is in life. I'm very mellow. mellow. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. I'm like super mellow. So like for me, the, the dramatic side of things is it takes a lot of effort, you know, like, I know, no, totally. I had to cut like, dramatic people out of my life at one point. Cause I was just tired all the time. It yeah. Just, it's, oh. it's physically, <laughs> mentally, emotionally exhausting to have but to deal with I, it when I, you're I, a mellow I, person. 
the influencer drama once in a while. They can have like their little drama and I'll find it entertaining for like this long. It's okay. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, I get, I get the, uh, the, the allure of it, but as long as it's not with me, like I could watch it and be like, you know, <laughs> <but> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> as long as it's not me, you know, but, um, so let's see. So Mike here was saying, thanks for the lunchtime inspiration. Thanks, Mike. Um, Cliff was saying, uh, you don't need to be clickbaity. Thanks, Cliff. Yeah, <laughs> I you don't definitely don't. <laughs> uh, so um, let's see. As long, maybe this is a question here. Uh, no, that's not. Here we go. Well, we'll, le we'll leave off with this one um, and we'll expand it a little bit. So will you be having a workshop in Toronto, Canada? And uh, obviously moving forward, do you have any short-term plans within the next, like, I don't know, three months or so to put on any, uh, workshops? This is a big sigh. Yeah, <sighs> well, yeah. um, I currently have some workshops scheduled in my studio in August and September. Mm -hmm. Uh, we will see how the world evolves from that. I had a lot of workshops that were scheduled, um, in the past three months that got canceled, but moved to the next year. Cause a lot of times people do events. Uh, mm -hmm. but if you go to learnwithlindsay.com and then you go to either workshops or events, I have a calendar there. Um, and you can search by location, but it also basically anything that's confirmed on my calendar goes up. And so you can check and see what's up. So I've got stuff listed on there, but we'll see how the world goes and to answer your direct question. I don't think there's anything confirmed in uh, Toronto in the near future. So that would be under events is where you'd find it. Under events right here. And uh, this website, this is my educational website. I'm going to be relaunching it uh, in the beginning of July. So it'll be cool with some new stuff, uh, some free, some paid, some whatever, but I'm excited because you know, you put so much time and effort into these things. So it's nice to give it a, a fresh coat of paint every once in a while. Totally. Totally. Very cool. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Um, looking forward to, uh, to seeing how all of this comes together and, uh, also what this, uh, kind of like break does for you creatively. You know, I feel like there's going to be some good things that come out from it. I, I think, I think we'll see a lot of really interesting things in the photo industry. Cause I think people are going to be excited and you'll see it in their work and maybe mm. they'll be a little less fearless because they're just excited to have the opportunity to create. So why not create something that you've always wanted to try? So I think it's going to be good. Yeah. I think like there's no excuse for it now. You know, you can't say you don't have the time to do it. Oh you know, gosh. I mean, maybe not having the money for some people <laughs> might be a thing, you know, a laugh, cry. Yeah. Like, uh, let's sigh. Let's sigh. But, oh um, you know, with that being said, Lindsay, thank you so much for, for joining us today and for, for being, uh, for always being an open book. I always feel like anytime I've ever talked to you, even from, you know, way back in the day when, when I was a young uh, pup in this, uh, in this game, you know, I felt like you were always an open book and um, you always were gracious. You would take your time and uh, we're very much unlike a lot of other people that we've rubbed shoulders with in the industry that, you know, are not as uh, genuine. So uh, Let's thanks. Let's talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that off air, but you know, really appreciate you taking the time today to uh, to join us and to join me and to answer these questions. And uh, where where can uh, everybody go and uh, follow up with your work and uh, with uh, all of your stuff? Sure. So the website you're on, Learn with Lindsay, is where you'll be able to see any educational content. But the place that I'm most active right now is on Instagram. It's Lindsay Adler underscore photo. And uh, I update at least five times a week and uh, I'm on there. And then uh, if you have questions for me, the best way to do that is I have a Facebook group. Search my name in Facebook and uh, actually tag me so that I see it. Uh, and uh, I'm all over the place. So hopefully once all these events start up again, I'll see you in real life. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Uh, thank you all as well for uh, joining the live stream. We had a, a record turnout for the live stream, which is pretty exciting. Um, if you're watching this after the fact, don't feel like, oh man, I missed it. I don't get to you know, ask questions. Uh, please, by all means, leave your questions even after this when it's the, the replay, uh, because I know I go through them and I try to you know field questions and I'll go back to Lindsay and be like, hey, there was a good question in the comments. Uh, so please make sure that you do that. If you watch this video in its entirety, uh, do me a favor, 
leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't know, maybe Lindsay, you have a similar thing, maybe not, but like, I have like a, a loving group of trolls on my YouTube channel that like two oh. seconds after the video posts, they thumb it down. So it's, it's kind of annoying. Cause like the newer person who'll come to the video, there's so much value that you shared and they'll come <laughs> to the video and it's like 10 thumbs down, two thumbs up. It's like, what is going on? Yeah, I'm telling you, it's it's. I haven't encountered this yet, but I'll like. Oh man, I still have the heartbreak of when there's like one thumbs down. I'm like, I know this was an awesome video. What is that person? Yeah, like, what is wrong with you? What What did you? Like, yeah, that's the worst. I, I feel like if they leave a thumbs down, they should be like, there should be a box that comes up that says, "What didn't you like?" Identify yourself. <laughs> yeah, or or at least say like, what is it that you didn't like? You know, because yeah. it's like, hey, if you didn't like my face, then I'm sorry. I can't really do much about that. But totally. you know, uh, it, it would definitely be nice to know. But I do feel like it it kind of makes makes it to where other people who would have gotten value out of the content, unfortunately, don't get a chance to even see it or, or engage yeah, with I it. Learn of it. about this stuff. Yeah. See, that's that's that. this, this was a thing. We're we're gonna keep talking about YouTube. Totally. This Three of us. I mean, come back. Definitely, we gotta we gotta put our little mastermind group together here <laughs> and uh, help one another out. So, but uh, with that being said, thank ev thank you everyone for for joining. Thank you, Lindsay, for joining us, and uh, okay. see you guys in the next live stream. Be safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another, and uh, see you guys later. Bye, everybody. <laughs>